Qatar, welcoming the world. But long before the fans arrived came the MPs. Dozens visited the country before the World Cup, and Sky News' Westminster Accounts Project can reveal the Qatari government spent over £240,000 in hosting them. MPs insist their visits were purely educational, but this part of a system that, some say, is all about persuasion. All party parliamentary groups, where MPs from all sides can come together around shared interests and issues. They do research, make visits and publish reports. Loosely regulated, they have no official status in Parliament, but they are a big part of the Westminster system and what they say carries weight. MPs are calling for a review of the use of so-called smart motorways. He now says he'll be starting a new group of MPs to push that further. Sort out our drugs laws. British parliamentarians are worried the Saudi package won't meet UK travel regulations. MPs want the manufacturer to make amends. Vigorous pressure being exerted on companies who frankly have got away with murder. Huge influence in the public debate, but what happens behind closed doors? Whether you're lobbying for a bank, a religion or a nation state, APPGs might not be well known, but they are big business. £20 million has been funnelled into them over the course of this parliament alone. Most of that goes on paying for organisers, reports, research, events and trips. And there are plenty of these APPGs to put money into. 753 active groups. That's more of them than there are sitting members of parliament. And these are the ones that are getting the most money. So many different subjects covered here in just the top five. Banking, Christianity, levelling up, tech and artificial intelligence. There's an APPG for every sector and every cause. And this is where the money's coming from. Names you've probably never heard of. But what they say they do is revealing. Of the top ten, six of these companies are registered for lobbying and many others have a clear agenda. So much of life in Westminster is lobbying the art of persuasion central to politics. And APPGs can provide a rich canvas. It takes just five MPs to set one up, and companies can fund them directly, giving to a group that matches their cause. Or they can give cash via a lobbying group. It's their job to convince politicians and governments to do what they want, but it's not always easy to get them to speak on camera. So when I was offered the chance to chair an event on lobbying in Parliament, I couldn't possibly say no. And we've got a brilliant uh, panel here tonight uh, to talk through that. A room of lobbyists making the case that they can be a force for good. They see APPGs as a powerful tool. I know our APPG helped influence getting more money for Northern culture and the levelling up, like uh, levelling up fund. We did that. We know that was net zero. We know the action plan, uh, the 2030 target, was reduced because of what we said. We think that, but it was had influence, and that's bringing that group together. It's really effective. But finding it hard to defend the system. Some people worry that APBGs are used through the secretariats, the sort that you run, in order to push particular corporate agendas. Is that true? I think it might be true. I think probably most groups do things or operate the way we do. I think there are a minority of APPGs that are funded by certain organisations who are peddling their line and they are trying to unfairly influence parliamentary decisions. There are too many of them and it's too easy to set them up. Where there's a potential problem is in the lack of transparency on funding, the lack of transparency on their objectives and the lack of transparency on how they behave within parliament. Can you name some examples or give some scenarios where there's an issue? No. <laughs> Why not? Uh, no, I, there, are, there are 650 to choose from, so... But you think there are issues, that you know that there are issues with some of them because they're not doing what they say on the tin, they're actually tools of individual corporate vested interests and there's no way of stopping it? 
I would say that. Do you think there's unethical behaviour with APPGs at the moment? It's not a no. I know. A stark warning from one of the government's top ethics watchdogs. I think this is the next uh, big scandal unless we take action. But a number of them are... Um, the secretariat comes from professional organisations, from uh, from uh, lobbying groups um, and from organisations that are a bit lax to grind. And I don't think there is sufficient transparency in terms of um, why they're doing it. There are clear examples of a business putting its money into an APPG to try and influence policy. The CBD APPG are funded by a single company with a specific interest. Tenacious Labs open that easing cannabis regulations is the company's goal. But they say it's the MPs who call the shots. What you have to do is you have to persuade some MPs or officers, of, you know, officers there, five of them, that it's of sufficient interest to them um, that if you do a bunch of grunt work to supply them with the heavy lifting, that they're prepared to spend some time on it. And it's their APPG, not ours, and they make that very clear as we go along, providing them with sensible first drafts for a discussion to happen around. And that's, that's our job. We work for the APPG. We, we don't, you know, we're not the tail wagging the dog. Millions of pounds going into a largely unregulated part of the political system. Many all-party groups work to inform and educate but even those who work at the heart of them admit they could be open to abuse. The Westminster accounts makes it easier to follow the money. 